This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. Today's video lecture is on absolute motion analysis. It's from chapter 16.4 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hibbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to determine the velocity and acceleration of a rigid body undergoing general plane motion using an absolute motion analysis. Now remember, general planar motion means that the body is both translating and rotating. Activities will cover some applications We'll define general planar motion, and we will do some problem solving. So here's a dump truck. Uh, the dumping pen on the truck rotates about a fixed axis passing through the pen at A, and it is operated by the extension of a hydraulic cylinder that goes from B to C. The angular position of the pen can be specified using the angular position coordinate theta, and the position of point C on the pen is specified by using the coordinate S. So if you're designing this, how do you relate the velocity of the hydraulic cylinder and the resulting angular velocity of the bend? Here's a large window. It's opened by a hydraulic cylinder going from A to B. The position B of the hydraulic cylinder is related to the angular position theta of the window. If you're designing this, how do you relate the translational velocity at B of the hydraulic cylinder and the angular velocity and acceleration of the window? Here's a piston and crank. The position of the piston, this x, can be defined as a function of the angular position of the crank, theta. By differentiating x with respect to time, the velocity of the piston can be related to the angular velocity omega of the crank. So this is necessary when designing an engine. Okay, here's the window again. It shows a window being opened by a hydraulic cylinder going from A to B. The absolute motion analysis method relates the position of point P on a rigid body undergoing rectilinear motion to the angular position theta of a line contained in the body. So once a relationship in the form of S is some function of theta is established, we can get the velocity and acceleration of B in terms of the angular velocity and angular acceleration of the rigid body by taking the first and second time derivatives of this equation. As a reminder, you usually need to use the chain rule when taking the derivatives of the position coordinate equation. So let's establish a procedure for analyzing motion. First, locate a point on the body using some position coordinate which is measured from a fixed origin. From a fixed reference line in the body, you can measure the angular position theta of a line lying inside that body. Using the dimensions of the body, relate s to theta, that is, get s as some function of theta. Then take the first time derivative of s to get a relationship between velocity and angular velocity, and take the second time derivative to get a relationship between acceleration and angular acceleration. So here's an example. Here we have a circular cam that's rotating clockwise about O with a constant angular velocity. Find the velocity and acceleration of the follower rod, A, as a function of theta. So our plan is to set the coordinate x to be the distance between O and A, and then relate that x to the angular position theta. And then we'll take the time derivatives of the position equation to find the velocity and acceleration relationships. So my first step is to relate x and theta. That is, I want x as some function of theta. Well, let's see here. I can draw these lines down here. Now, this is the distance x. This is r, right, the radius of the cam. And I'll call this a. Well, a can be related to theta by using e and the cosine of theta. So a is equal to e cosine of theta. Therefore, I can write that x is equal to a plus r, which is e cosine of theta plus r. Now I want the time derivative of x, but I have x as a function of theta, so I need to use the chain rule. So I'll say dx dt is equal to dx d theta d theta dt. So that's for the first term here. And the second term I can just write dr dt. So let's do that. So dx d theta is minus e sine of theta 
times d theta dt, which is theta dot, plus dr dt, which I'll call r dot. So this is x dot. Now, since r is constant, it's the radius of the cam, r dot is zero. So now I need to take the derivative of x dot, but again, x dot is now a function of theta and time. So I have to use the product rule and the chain rule. So dx dot dt is equal to dx dot d theta times d theta dt. So that's the derivative of this right here. Using the product rule, then I can say minus e sine of theta times the derivative of theta dot with respect to time, which is theta double dot. Now we were told that omega was constant, therefore theta dot is constant and theta double dot is zero. So I'll take dx dot d theta is equal to minus e cosine theta times theta dot times d theta dt, which is again theta dot. So that equals minus e cosine theta, theta dot squared. Now furthermore, we were told the cam was rotating clockwise, but I measured theta dot counterclockwise. So let's go over here. So I know that theta dot is minus omega. So I can make those substitutions. Now this is equation one. This is equation two here. So x dot then becomes, this is equation one, uh, e omega sine of theta, and x double dot minus e cosine of theta times theta dot squared, and omega minus omega squared, so that's omega squared. So here's another problem. The crank AB rotates at a constant angular velocity of omega equal 150 radians per second. So since omega is constant, the angular acceleration of AB is zero. Find the velocity of point P on the piston when theta equal 30 degrees. So our plan is to define x as a function of theta and differentiate with respect to time. So first we need to relate x and theta. So I'm going to draw a line down here and I'll call this point C. So the distance x is equal to the distance AC plus the distance CP. Well the distance AC well, I have a fixed crank length of 0.2 feet at some angle theta, so AC is equal to 0 0.2 times cosine of theta. Now the distance CP, well, I have a right triangle from B to C to P, so I can say that the distance from B to C squared plus the distance from C to P squared is equal to 0.75 squared. Pythagorean theorem. Now the distance BC is uh, 0 0.2 times the sine of theta. Well, I'm interested in the distance from C to P, so I can write that CP squared is equal to 0.75 squared minus BC squared, which is 0 0.2 sine of theta squared. So now I can say that X is equal to the distance from A to C, which is 0 0.2 cosine of theta, plus the distance from C to P, which is the square root of 0 0.75 squared minus 0 0.2 sine theta squared. So again, you're going to need to use the chain rule here, and I'm going to leave that to you to do offline. But when you take the derivative of x with respect to time, you get x dot is equal to minus 0 0.2 times omega times the sine of theta minus 0 0.2 squared times the sine of 2 theta times omega divided by 2 times the square root of 0.75 squared minus 0.2 sine theta quantity squared. 
So we were asked uh, for theta is equal to 30, um, omega is 150 radians per second. You substitute that in to that equation and get x dot is minus 18.5 feet per second. So it's negative, so it means x is getting smaller, so the piston is moving towards the left. Okay, here's another problem. We have a hydraulic cylinder from A to B, and it shortens at a constant rate of 0.15 meters per second, so it's getting shorter and it's constant, so therefore S double dot is zero. Um, and when it does that, it raises the girder G of this vascular bridge, which is a drawbridge. Find the angular velocity of the bridge girder when theta is 60 degrees. So our plan is set the coordinate S to be the distance AB, then relate S to theta, and then take the time derivative of this position relationship to find the angular velocity. Okay, so from A to B to C, you can see there's a triangle there, and I'm interested in that length S. So I can call this angle right here alpha, and angle alpha is just 180 minus theta. So I'm going to use the law of cosines to get the relationship between S and theta. So I can say that AB squared is equal to AC squared minus CB squared, I'm sorry, plus, minus 2 times AC times CB times cosine of alpha, which is cosine of 180 minus theta. So I know the length from B to C is 3 meters, the length from A to B is 5 meters, and the length from A to B is S. So I can say that S squared is equal to AC squared, which is 5 squared, plus CB squared, which is 3 squared, minus 2 times 5 times 3 times cosine 180 minus theta. So I can say that S squared is equal to 34 plus 30 cosine of theta. So let's write down our equation again. S squared is equal to 34 plus 30 times cosine. Now cosine of 180 minus theta is cosine of theta. So I can take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time. So this side is going to be 2s s dot equal to derivative of 34. 34 is constant, so it's 0. Plus, now the derivative of this second term here is a function of theta, so I need to use the chain rule. So I'll take the derivative of 30 cosine theta with respect to theta and multiply it by d theta dt. So I'll get 30 times minus sine of theta times theta dot. So I can rewrite this and say that theta dot is equal to minus s times s dot over 15 times sine of theta. So we were asked uh, to solve for when theta is equal to 60 and s dot, now it said s dot was getting shorter by 0.15 meters per second, so it's negative. So you make the substitutions into equation 1 and you get theta dot is equal to 0 0.5. 0.0808 radians per second. This concludes chapter 16.4 on absolute motion analysis. Next up is chapter 16.5, relative motion analysis, velocity.